Hello everyone, welcome to our third video lecture for the series on social statistics and for this specific video lecture, we'll talk about the different measures of central tendency. So first, we're going to be defining and differentiating descriptive versus inferential statistics and then we're going to be also talking about frequency and percentages. So we're going to be talking about or reviewing mean, median, mode, uh, interpreting central tendency values, and then we're going to be looking at relevant tests related to these discussions on Jamovi. And then later on, I will do some form of um, demonstration on how to use Jamovi. Uh, also, in the first part of this video, I am not going to be speaking of these uh, different tests in detail because I know that you've had this in your senior high school. So I'm we're just going to be really reviewing you with the nature of these tests. So first, let's differentiate descriptive versus inferential statistics. Uh, so descriptive statistics is concerned with the techniques that are used to describe or characterize obtained data. So you know, by the word descriptive, so we're going to be describing and characterizing the data, looking at the distribution of certain values in a given data set, and we're going to see whether or how how spread they are from each other, and basically what values do they usually converge in. Those are the type of questions that we ask if we want to answer it using descriptive statistics. And the second general type of statistics are inferential statistics, and these statistics involves techniques that use uh, uses the obtained sample data to infer something in the population whether and then of course looking at uh, um, how certain behaviors of certain variables are related to each other whether they are correlated associated um, whether one is predicting the other whether one is mediating or moderating the relationship of certain variables basically when we go to hypothesis testing or when it's time for us to be looking to add to ask hypothesis or inferences within the data then that's the time we're going to use inferential statistics but for this specific variable we'll be talking mostly about descriptive statistics so the most basic way of presenting our data is through frequency distribution. Uh, frequency distribution is a method of presenting the score values and the frequency of how often they occur in a given data set. When presented in a table, the score values are listed in rank order. So if this is a continuous variable, uh, we go from the lowest to the highest or vice versa. And then we indicate how many times they occur in the data. So this is an example of a poorly presented frequency distribution. I say it's poor because you see that the scores are really just, you know, um, listed here and then the number of times that they are occurring in the data are just presented like that. You no, know? While this is good in terms of arranging our data, it doesn't really give us much meaning and it's really hard to catch where in this data we can see whether there are convergences or divergences in terms of where certain data points meet. No? And then um, there are two schools of thought in terms of what uh, uh, what uh, sign we're going to use to indicate frequency distribution. Usually the, the, more, st the more elementary ones we use this um, italicized F or sometimes when we are already speaking in terms of you know looking at sample data uh, we use n or the small letter n but for purposes of this discussion we're going to use the italicized f a better way of uh, presenting your frequency distribution is grouping your scores first and then indicating how often does a certain value appear within a specific group. So it gives you more information about the convergences and divergences within the data and it gives you uh, more information about where the data is no? in terms of how many um, uh, are the usual occurrences of a given score. So for instance, in this case, it's easy to, for us to see that the highest scores are within 76 to 77. So this is one way for us to present um, scores that are continuous data using frequency distribution. Of, although, of course, later on you will learn about um, other ways of presenting continuous data. But the best way of using frequency and uh, frequency distribution is when your data is in nominal mode. No? So if your data is nominal or categorical, 
in nature or if it's ordinal in nature, then uh, that's one of the ways you can best present using a um, frequency distribution because the data set or the data is not that many as compared to a continuous variable like this one. And also, another problem in terms of putting your data into brackets is... <clears throat> uh, is uh, uh, is you, you lose some of the data. Like for example, when you indicate 10 here, you don't know which of those 10 are 76 and you don't know which of those 10 are 77. So that's one of the downsides of grouping the scores. And then usually when we present the frequency distribution, we also present the relative frequency or we know that as percentage. So I don't really have to explain this in full detail, but that we know that relative frequency or percentage can be defined as the number of times an event occurs uh, divided by the total number of events occurring in a given scenario times 100. So that's your percentage. So if a certain value's frequency is 55 and the total number of uh, people in the data set is 100 so what we do is 55 divided by 100 is 5.55 times 100 and that's 55 percent okay so this is just easy to compute because your denominator is 100 but of course it's going to be a little bit difficult when it's not rounded now a better way of presenting where your data convergence converges is through central tendency. So a measure of central tendency is a single value. So basically the goal of a central tendency is to be able to point us to a single value that attempts to describe a set of data by identifying the central position within that set of data. So in which data point do the data does the data set converge? No? So if we're going to describe one set of people uh, using a specific data, like for example, blood pressure, what is their central blood pressure? Where does their blood pressure um, converge? You know? Or where does their age converge? You know? So that's your central tendency. Now, you probably may have known this already, but the most common form of central tendency measure is mean or basically your average. So your average is the sum of scores divided by the number of scores. So I don't think I have to really write down the formula for you. I know you already know what, how to compute a mean. So you've known this since you were elementary. So very important, what are the different properties of a mean? So one, the mean is sensitive to the exact value of all the mean scores in the distribution. So uh, for example, if you want the mean age of a certain uh, group of people and you have, let's say, um, people who are uh, 15, 16, 17, um, and 18, then your uh, mean you know, would be around 16.5, right? But for example, if there's someone in that group of age is, for example, is 30, then your mean, you know, for this one becomes 19.2, which is very far from 16.5 and is already outside the first four values, you know. And that's the reason why it's so hard to describe, for example, the mean income in the Philippines because it's going to be stretched out by really large you know, really um, rich people who are in the top 1% of the population. And so the mean may not be the best indicator of looking at where the uh, means for the income um, converge. And like I said, um, the mean is very sensitive to the extreme scores. Um, so as, as we have seen here and also in the context of income distribution in a given country, especially countries that are very unequal like the Philippines. However, mean is what we still use mostly in the social and the behavioral sciences because it's what we use mostly for hypothesis testing. So mean will, will mostly where we'll be going to in terms of inferential statistics, all right? So we're going to be using this um, always. Now, we've talked about the arithmetic mean. So another type of mean is the weighted mean, which we use for Likert scales. 
So you might have already seen the formula of how to do Likert scales manually during your high school. So what I will demonstrate later when I present to you uh, Excel and Jamovi is how to do weighted mean in terms of uh, Likert scales later. Now for means, uh, usually in, in thesis, you will need to uh, verbally or qualitatively interpret the mean. So for example, when you get the mean is 27.5, what does 27.5 mean? So there are two ways for you to be able to identify what 27.5 mean if that is your um is the value that you got from your mean. So first is you try to check the standardized tool um, uh, the journal or the developer of the standardized tool and check whether or not they have already cited um, cutoffs for certain variables. Like for example, in the uh, short Warwick Edinburgh mental well-being scale, they already indicated uh, the values wherein you will say that you know a certain mental well-being score is low, moderate, or high. So for example, if uh, the score is uh, 18 and below, if it's 17 to 18, then that is going to be low. Then if that's 19 to 26, then go that is uh, moderate. No, if it's 27 to um, <clears throat> 27 to 35, then that is going to be high. So this one we didn't really make that uh, verbal interpretation ranges of scores, but it's something that is already uh, prescribed or fortified by the um by the maker of the tools however if you are the one who made the questionnaire or if the questionnaire this developer does not really identify ranges or cutoffs then you can be the one to make your verbal interpretation usually in the social sciences we make use of three that's low moderate and high so if you're going to look at you know how a certain behavioral or social variable is um uh is uh, is um, demonstrated or reported in the variables, especially using the Likert scale. So if none, you can use this strategy. So get the highest possible score minus the lowest possible score, and then the difference will be divided based on the number of levels um, or interpretations needed. Usually, like I said, it's going to be three, uh, three no low, moderate, and high. So for example, you have a Likert scale that is five points, so one to five um, uh, the choices for each of the statements and then you have let's say you have seven statements for each so the lowest possible score seven times one is seven and the highest score is five so seven to thirty five so what you do first is to div to uh, subtract the lowest score from the highest score so thirty five minus seven equals equals 28 and then after that you divide 28 by the number of interpretations that you need so we need 3 so 28 divided by 3 equals 9 so you now set up the range how do you set that up so let's set that up um so the lowest score is 7 so 7 plus 9 equals um 16 no? And then uh, 16 plus 9 equals um, 25. Yeah, 25. And then uh, the next one is uh, 35, right? So 7 to 16 is going to be low, right? And then 17 to 25 is moderate. And then 26 to 35 is high. All right so that is so for instance your value the the value that you got for your specific scale is let's say uh um 18.75 then 18.75 is within the range of moderate so that's how we are going to be interpreting it so next we have the median. So the median is the score or the scale value below which 50% of the 
uh, scores fall or it's usually called the P50 or percentile 50. We'll talk about percentiles next week. No? So a range in rank, the median is the centermost score if the number of scores is odd. So for example, you have 16, 17, 19, 18, 20. So what is your median? So your median here is you have to arrange them first according to um, rank, so 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and your median is 18. So remember, half of the scores is above 18 and half of the scores is below 18. So if it's, um, it, if it's, ano naman, if it's uh, even numbered uh, sample, then for example, we have 17, 18, 20, 19, 16, 21. So if we put them in scale, so that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So you get the middlemost 2 and then you get the mean. So your median is 18.5. So I think you already know this from your elementary statistics. So that's the best property of median is that when you identify the median, you know that half of the, half of the sample is below uh, the median and half of the sample is above the median. So when we say that the median age of the population is 18, it means that half of the population is below 18 and half of the population is above 18. So when you look at when you you know when you look at the population pyramids, you know, population pyramids this is your males and your females and you distribute how many males per bracket of age, no? And then you would see usually for developed countries, no, you would see them very thin here at the bottom and then it gets thinner as you get above, right? So that's um, and then for for developing countries like the Philippines, you will see a really wide base here, no? But what I'm saying is that when you say that the median age, the lower the median age, the younger the population. So for example, uh, if the median age of a country is 24, it means that that's a fairly young population because half of the population is beyond, below 24 and half of the is be, uh, above 24, right? So that's the characteristic of the median. Uh, next, if the number of scores is even, the median is taken as the average of the two centermost score and uh, that we done that already earlier. And then the median is less sensitive than mean to extreme scores. So it means, so what does that mean? No, It means that, uh, for example, you have 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, the median would be 18. But for example, we make, you know, zero 17, 16, 18, 55. The median, because when you arrange this, the median will still be 18. So this one, if you make this mean, then it will be different. The value will be different. But it's still 18 because that is still the midway despite the distance of the highest and the lowest score. So median is usually a better way of looking at the convergence of scores when there are extreme values no, in a given uh, data set. And finally, we have the mode. So the mode is basically just the most frequent score in the distribution. So the one with the highest frequency and percentage, then that's going to be your mode. So let's say you have 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 18, 19. So the mode is 9, 18. Right? So it's the easiest among the three measures to determine because you're basically just going to count how many times each value comes up. And then it's usually the peak of the normal curve. So usually if you arrange your values like this with this is the values and this is the number of frequency per value, usually the peak, that's your, where you find your mode. Right? And we'll talk about the normal curve later. And then there are distributions that are unimodal, meaning um, there is only one mode in the distribution, like for example, in this case, um, you have just one mode, which is 18. But there is a bimodal, um, uh, bimodal um, distribution, like for example, you have 16, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 18, 19, 20. You have two modes here because you have three 16s and three 18s. So you have two modes. Now, um, Usually, when you find a bimodal, um, uh, when you when you find a bimodal or a multimodal, when you see multimodal more than uh, three or more, 
uh, when you find a bimodal or multimodal um, distribution, you can kind of infer that maybe there's more than one group that is present in this specific data set. For for example, you would see that there's a there's there's a mode that's 16, there's a mode that is 18. So you might want to ask, maybe the first mode belongs to a certain subgroup within that population and 18 belongs to another subgroup. Like for example, maybe 16 is for the males and 18 is for the females. And maybe you have to test using an inference statistic whether that hunch is true or not. But we'll discuss that in a different day later. So in Jamovi, where do you find your um where do you find your uh central tendency and your frequency and your percentage? So you go to exploration and then you choose descriptives. And then you enter the variables that you want to um, that you want to uh, do descriptives on, and then there are going to be outcomes that are going to be presented in the other window, right? So um, you can click here. The th uh, you can click here the important values, no, that you need. So, for example. Um, you can click, so the mean, median, and mode are here, so the, the movie will produce mean, median, and mode. I will show you later how it's that being done. And then you can also include how many is your N, you know, and how many is your mean, meaning um, the certain banks in that specific value. So we'll talk about how to do these things uh, in a little while. And hello everyone. So uh, welcome to our um, demonstration. No, you see, uh, for our um, descriptive statistics using both Excel and also your Jamovi. So as you can see here in your screen, nakita niyo yung ating um, sample um, data set. So I will orient you first with this data set para maintindihan niyo what these values mean. So this is my coding guide. So ito yung mga variables natin, no? So para magkaroon kayo ng idea. So of course we have the control number, no? Um, and then we have sex assigned as, as as birth, no? So one is male, zero is female, and then we also had measurement for the region. So one pag NCR yung sumasagot, zero pag non NCR yung sumasagot. And then we also measured for the highest educational attainment. So one, if siya ay high school or below, two, if college graduate, and three, if meron siyang postgraduate degree. Um, and then we have income classification. So one, pag low income siya, two, pag middle income, and then three, pag upper income to reach. And then, um, tung year born, hindi natin siya gagamitin because this is just an indication for two of our variables na important. One is the estimated age in years. So ang value niya is 2021 minus the year that they were born here in this value. So yun yung es kaya estimated kasi hindi talaga nila nilagay yung actual age nila. Kinumpute lang natin based on the last year. Hindi ko magawang 2022 because we have not yet been halfway of 2022. So I use 2021. So kaya estimated lang. And then uh, generational identity. So we group them based on their generational identity. So pag 1 yung kanilang score, then that's millennial. And then 0 pag uh, Gen Z. Now, the first major variable is satisfaction with life. So, sa satisfaction with life, uh, meron tayong uh, lima na, um, we have five indicators, no? five items. And these are those five questions. No? So, I just named them SWLS. One, two, three, four, five. Post SWLS meets satisfaction with life scale. No, so this is by Diener in 1985. So it is a seven point scale. So ayan na siya, no? one uh, strongly disagree, seven strongly agree. And then we have yung national resilience. So yung national resilience in this study has three. Uh, by the way, bago pala yon, no? yung satisfaction with life is. Um, uh, computed by uh, some su sum of ano to. So this is sum of um, SWLS 1 to 5. Ayan. 
And then for um for we have now your uh, national resilience so for pagka uh, um uh your national resilience has three domains and those domains are uh, identification with my country solidarity and justice and then trust in public institutions so ito yung identification with my country meron siyang anim na indicators or anim na items na may scale na one to five Okay, and then uh, we have solidarity and social justice for items, no? And then scale din is one to five. And then uh, TPI, which is trust in public institutions. And then um, scale niya is one to five, no? And then um, what we did was we computed for the average of the first domain, the second domain, and the, the third domain, no? So import, and then we also got the, overall var uh, value or average for all of this and that's going to be your national resilience. So I'm also going to be uh, putting another uh, another video doon sa inyong anima space um, of um, coding, no? uh, cleaning your Excel file and also kind of look, uh, aside from cleaning the Excel file is also trying to um, look at the composite scores of each domain and the overall scale. So itong itong ano national resilience is the first order um construct. So I first order construct ito yung pinakamataas na construct. And then itong tatlo identification with my country, solidarity and social justice and trust in public institutions. These are called second order constructs. So ibig sabihin under the first order construct of national resilience may tatlong domains which is identification with my country, solidarity and social justice and trust in public institutions. So you will find that in your citizenship behavior, in citizenship behavior nyo mismo that is um that is the first order scale and then the domains are the second order uh scale or constructs. Now, for satisfaction with life, wala siyang domain. So it's just a first order construct. So wala siyang specific domains. All right? So ayan siya. Okay, so ito na yung itsura niya, no? So when you um when you receive your Excel file from the Google form, it will not look like this clean. No? So you still have to clean the data set um um based on the coding code book that you I uh, made no and I approved so you have to do that no in order for you to um in order for you to uh, have a better experience in terms of um uh in a uh, better experience in terms of collecting uh, of of doing your Jamovi analysis all right so um make sure that uh, the values are already numerical, no, based on your code book. Make sure na um, walang maling entry. Make sure that it's clean. Make sure that um, there are no blanks, no. So yun yung mga importante rito, no. Um, and then um, actually, um, Jamovi uh, has um, is quite intuitive, no. Even if may words nababasa niya already as nominal pero since nasa basic stats tayo so we'll you do the, the the usual statistical practice of um of really transforming all the data to numericals no so um so ito na siya no ito na lahat ng ating mga variables that we need so what we're going to do and then remember ha dapat yung mga composite scores or yung weighted mean for example ito no um, this one is the sum of the all of the variables, no? So um, later on we can compute the mean, no? Uh, pero for example, ito yung scores for IMCW, IMWS, SJ, at saka TPI at saka yung NATRES. This is what we call a um, tawag dito. Uh, weighted mean. Kasi later on, yung means ng bawat person ay imi-mean natin. No? So, um, that's the easiest way. So, kung makikita ninyo, yung formula, no, in-average natin per person. So, per person na average yan. So, that's not yet the average or the arithmetic mean of the whole 
uh, population or the whole sample. No? Pagka, pagka minim natin yung mean nila, then that's the time it becomes an weighted mean. No? Um, yun siya. So we had, again, no, in explain ko kanina, we had three. So ito yung for the IWMC, ito yung SSJ, and then ito yung TPI. All right, so you can just go scrub back para malam para maalala niyo kung ano ibig sabihin ng tatlo na yon. Not rest means national resilience. Okay, so ang importante ngayon dito since we've already computed the important, you know, var kasi variable level scales, no? Variable level dapat kasi yung values. Ito kasi indicators lang to. These are just statements. These are these are these are not really value variable values. So we have to compute the variable values first by doing the means like this no pero you also have to look into the ano you also have to look into the instruction by the journal because some journals would say na you have to add and not mean or not average for example satisfaction with life scale does not mean the scores satisfaction with life wants you to add the scores so thus makita niyo wala siyang decimal points at saka add talagang addition lang kasi siya. But for this one, pag walang binigay na information in the journal or the journal indicates it, usually we use the mean as the score for the domain or the variable for each person. So remember, we are not, in when we do our statistics, no, especially the inferentials, we're not going to do this one. This, these are not your variables. Your variables, sorry, your variables are itong mga ito. Okay? So yun siya. So now that we've kind of cleaned this, no? So if you want more information about cleaning the cleaning your Excel, I'm going to put another uh, uh it's quite long, no? So uh, uh so I place it as a separate video so you can go to that. That's not a required watching, but if you feel like you need more information for cleaning the Excel file, you can look into that of um uh video. Um, so ito na yon. Um, so uh, unlike SPSS, which is a very very popular statistical tool, um, in Jamovi you won't be able to write the. I I think you can you can ano, pero it's easier paren to do your um, data encoding in Excel and then just um, tawag dito and just import it to the um, Jamovi. Um, program. Yun. So, i-import na natin siya para mabasa na siya. Okay. Alright. So, um, this is how Jamovi will look like when you open it. No? Sometimes, if you haven't opened a lot of windows, you'll find a homepage. But basically, you'll find this, this three um, this, rib, this ribbon no, with variables, data analysis, and edit, and you'll be able to see this um, particular three lines. No? So, pipindutin nyo siya, and then you will want to open the file. No? So, you will find your, hanapin ninyo yung file ninyo wherever kung saan ninyong folder nilagay. No? But sa akin, kasi nakalagay na siya sa recent. No? So, I will click it here. Sorry, nagsa stop share siya kapag ka nagano. But uh, again, I will reshare it. So ayan na siya. So as you can see, yung kanina nating mga values um, in the Excel have already been imported here in the data in the data set side of the window of Jamovi. No? So andyan na siya. Magic. Alright, so uh, what we do first is I think we have to define each variable in terms of what type of variable siya no kung siya ba ay so yeah, there's in offer n tayo ng Jamovi ng tatlong choices no so allow me to just click this no so for example for sex and then ab so for example we have so this one this is sex at birth so we will make it nominal correct no so remember yung ating ano or nominal ordinal and then we have continuous so continuous is um uh, what do you call this? Continuous is for interval or ratio scale. So nominal ito, and then we can probably also put labels. No? For example, zero means female, so para alam niya na, and then um, one means male. Right? So we can do that for all of our variables. So for example, region, so correct siya ay nominal. And then we have zero is none, and CR. And then one is NCR. And then I would put NCR on 
the first no yan all right so for um educational attainment no so uh, one is um high school high school and below um and then we have here college and then we have here um post grad and then i would uh, put post grad above and college not cause like ganyan all right and then house income i wag yan so dito tayo sa income lang all right um so uh house income na mali lang yan nalagay yan siya pero sa house income diba we have one is low income two is middle income three is high income and then we can just probably put um again change yung directions niya all right and then for year born hindi natin kailangan so estimated age estimated age is not nominal it's continuous so we make it continuous so wala na yung levels kasi it doesn't need the specific in uh, specific levels like kasi nga ito ay naging continuous variables na then we have gen id so for gen id you have your um this one is gen z and your one is your millennials maybe we can also put this on top all right and then for the next one lahat na ito sila lahat ay dapat um how do you call this dapat lahat sila ay continuous because these are likert scales so gagawin natin siyang continuous lahat so yun lang no um very intuitive naman itong si um uh ja movie but sometimes you really have to do some manual stuff to just teach it na hoy this is not nominal ha this is continuous um kasi pag nakikita niya na hindi siya decimal points ang feeling niya nominal siya but actually it is continuous no so as we discussed pag likert scales like this no if you remember yung kinolect yung data for uh, 1.0.1 no uh, you would see na itong mga indicators na to these are all likert scales and therefore we're going to put them under continuous no para tayo ay hindi mamamoblema mamaya when we you know. so nakita niyo yung mga averages no the scores that indicate the super variable no the domains are already here nakalagay na siya in continuous so intuitively na identify na siya ni Jamovi as ano why kasi nga may decimal points siya all right so let's try to uh, let's try now to apply um tawag dito let's now try to apply yung mga descriptive stats na tutunan natin kanina no so again no the theoretical part no i will give extra videos for you on that no but uh, kanina yung yung part kanina on the powerpoint is are just we're just breezing through what they are no but the main the the main dish for this video is this no kung paano mo siya gagawin sa jam movie all right so um usually we can find it under the tab of exploration and then you click descriptives All right. So basically, the way the movie works is that you it's very intuitive, no? You just place the variables that you want analyzed um into this commands, no? Into this columns and then it will already give you the information that you need, no? So usually what I do is I click this first and make I make variables across rows para hindi ako malito. No. So, ang gagawin muna natin, we will just remove muna yung mga variables na hindi ko pa naituro para hindi kayo malilito. No. So, I will remove standard deviation, minimum, and maximum. All right. And then I will put mode kasi ito pa yung tutunan natin. So, mean, median, mode. And then we click now frequency table. So, intuitively, ang gagawin ni Jamovi if na-identify niya yung variable as nominal or ordinal, maglalabas siya ng frequency and percentage table. Pag hindi siya nominal, hindi siya maglalabas ng frequency and percentage table. Usually naman, when we do our thesis or social statistics research or social quantitative social research, usually pag continuous yung variable, we'd rather see them directly as means rather than as frequencies and percentages. Pero kapag ka, these are nominal and ordinal variables, we usually present them as frequencies and percentages. No? Pero remember, pag nominal at ordinal ang variable, they don't have means and medians. Kasi nga, 
nominal variable sila at saka ordinal variable. So ang minimin natin, ayun pala no, hindi ko na discuss earlier, no. So means are usually useful pagka continuous ang variable nyo. All right? Medians and modes can be used. Uh, medians are okay when you have ordinal variables meaning al uh, alam mo yung ranking or you can also use median for continuous variables. And then modes usually these are used for nominal variables but you can also compute mode for continuous variables. So nakita niyo pag continuous ang variable mas pliable siya, mas marami siyang descriptive stats na magagawa. Okay, so gawin na natin siya. So okay, for example, we want to see no uh, we want to see yung um let's say yung descriptive stats for sex at birth, right? So as you can see, um, sorry, may mean siya kasi may lagay tayo ng 1, 0, but it doesn't mean anything. Ha? Pero kung makita ninyo, naglabas siya ng frequency table, right? So you see here that there are 435 females who responded and there are 279, at meron na siyang percentage. So yun ang maganda dito, you don't really have to compute it by hand, but it will already give you the idea. So... Um, ang mode ay zero, no? Kasi zero is female, no? So, but the mean doesn't mean anything. It just so happens that we we our value is one and zero. So automatically, dahil hindi naman uh, maalam masyado si Jamovi in terms of ano ba to? Uh, ito bang value na to? Should I compute it or not, no? So kaya may mean dyan. Pero ito titig na natin, no? the frequency and percentage. Kasi siya ay nominal variable. So, and then yung n means ito yung total number of values that are available for sex and then missing is zero. So, may kita ninyo, ang lahat ng missing natin ay zero kasi wala tayong optional na question. We required all the questions. So, let's now go to region. So, under the region, we see that mas maraming taga NCR, 70% ay NCR ang non-NCR ay 29.4%. So let's, let's keep adding the important one. So next, we have educational attainment. So makita natin na 143 ay high school and below, college graduate ay 500, and then college grad ay uh, post-grad ay 71%. So mapapansin nyo, dito lang siya, lumalab, dito siya magkakaroon ng meaning, no? kasi nga dito, Dahil siya ay um, nominal variable. No? By the way, no, may mali ako pala. No? Sorry, let's go back to the data. Dapat, sorry ha, educational attainment should not have been um, nominal. Educational attainment should be ordinal pala. I'm so sorry. Because there is, meron kasi siyang pagkasunod-sunod. No? High school bilang pinakamababa, college yung pangalawa, postgrad yung pangatlo. So the same thing with um, income class. no, So, dapat din siya ay ordinal. So, at least na-correct na natin yun. Going back, so, ayan na. Naka, nag, nag, nagpalit lang sila ng, ng, um, ng direction, pero ayan siya. Ano pa rin siya. Alright. So, let's put in income class here. So, may kita natin for income class, 92% ay low. Ay, 12.9% ay low, 92, 37, 24. So, ayan na yung mga values ninyo. No? And then you have your um, year born, hindi kasama. So estimated age, hindi lalabas yung frequencies. Bakit? Kasi ang frequency table lang niya are nominal and ordinal. Pero dahil nilagay natin siya as continuous, meron siya ngayong mean, median, at mode. So ang mid, mean mo ay 24.5. So that's the mean age for everyone who, in, who answered this specific question of this survey. And then 23 ang median. So ibig sabihin nito, half of the participants are below 23, half of the participants are above 23. And the most occurring, um, and the highest occurring, uh, and the mode it, which is the most frequently occurring age is 20. All right? Sige. Now let's move to um, gawa lang tayo ng bago para hindi tayo masyadong ano. So tapos na sa demographic profile. Let's now look at the main variable. So choose tayo ulit. Bago ng, uh, bago ng command, no? bagong area. No? So tanggalin na ulit natin yung mga dating kailangan, which is minimum, maximum. Babalikan natin sila mamaya. Alright? Um, uh, sorry, next um, next video naman sila. So let's now look at... Um, um, satisfaction with life. So usually, para mabilis na lang, ang nilalagay ko na lang ay um, ganyan na lang. No? So, um, so ayan na. No? Meron ka na ngayong ano, meron ka ng um, uh, 
sorry, ginawa ko rin variables across row. So, so meron ka ng idea. No? So for indicator number one, ang mean mo ay 4.44. Ang median mo ay 5. Ang mode mo ay 5. So, ganyan. Alright? So, tignan naman ngayon natin sa susunod. No? So, ayan na yung mean mo ay Uh, ang ang sum mo ay 22.20 and then 23 and then 23 ulit no all right so uh, and then gawin din natin siya for the last no yung sa um, national resilience so ang gagawin ko muna ilalagay ko lahat ng IWMC no sorry balita natin ulit siya variable across rows lagay yung mode tanggalin yung nuisance no so ayan ulit yung mean median mode niya no and then ilalagay ko yung o average no para lang may guide tayo no and then we have here um next is the SSJ and then lagay natin yung SSJ average dun sa susunod ayan and then let's put TPI and then ilagay natin yung TPI average and then we put the net rest average so meron ditong more than one. So, yung sinasabi niya sa inyo na mayroong extra mode, no? Uh, so, hindi siya, ano, so bimodal siya, no? Or, or multimodal. Hindi natin malalaman kung ano yon, kung ano yung multimodal na value na yon, no? Uh, kasi nga, na, hindi siya naka-frequency, no? Dahil nga, nilagay natin siya as a, um, as a, as a continuous variable. But at least we know the first occurring mode, no? At least nakita natin dito. So, may clue tayo na siya ay Um, by modal or multimodal. So, um, makita natin. So, for example, for the uh, uh, life satisfaction, no, ang mean niya ay 22.20. Ang top score ay 35. So, nasa moderate siya naglalaro. Tapos, we have median. And then, we have the mode. No? Um, and then, for um, your descriptives, no, you have here your... Um, Uh, IWMC no and that's your um uh, and ito, ito yung mga per item nyo sa IMWMC no so may kita ninyo that um so usually ang ginagawa natin tinitingnan natin which indicator has the highest so may kita natin ang pinaka highest nyo ay si IWMC 6 which is 3.30 and yung overall ni IWMC ay 2.86 No, and then may kita rin natin yung mga medians, no? For example, ang median ni IWMC ay 2, yung kay IWMC 2 ay 3, etc., etc. And same thing with the mode here, no? So ganito din kay SSJ, titingnan natin kung ano yung highest mean, no? 4.24, no? So para magkaroon tayo ng clue kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng SSJ, mamaya babalikan natin what are the questions that are indicated for this, no? For each of the SSJs, no? Uh, and then you have TPs, no? May kita natin TP uh, Uh, TPI 3 ang pinakamataas and the overall TP is 2.36. Medyo mababa yung TPI. That's just in public institutions. Not, it's not surprising naman. And then yung overall natin for national, um, uh, uh, what do you call this? Yung national resilience ay 2.88. Ayan. So that's uh, how you generate your mean, median mode and frequency tables using your Jamovi. And then and in a little while, we'll try to discuss how you can present this for the assignment. Ha? So this is, uh, we'll present it for the assignment and not, pero hindi pa ito yung APA sta. So for the assignment muna. Hello. So, Everyone, this is what you're going to be um, submitting. Uh, so you're going to be, um, you, you must uh, do uh, the basic descriptive stats uh, that I taught you for this video. So first, so for the three major variables of your study, so we have the demographic profile here. We have the main variable, So in your case, it's the citizenship behaviors. And then the outcome variable for you, it's the well-being outcomes. So the first is you have to copy-paste in your appendix sa dulo no, the outcomes, uh, the outputs of your Jamovi. So this is just for me to be able to see whether or not you are able to do the Jamovi um, stats that I taught you in the previous section of this video. Um, this is fairly easy to do. You just right-click the, the tables you want to 
uh, copy and then just copy it and then paste it. Uh, and as you can see, it's already APA style. But since we're not yet writing, kahit hindi mo na APA itong main things that you have to do. So for the social demographic profile, I want you to identify uh, based on the type of variable, whether they're continuous or categorical or ordinal, whether you're going to use mean or frequency and percentage. For example, in this case, estimated age in years cannot be frequency percentage because this is continuous, but I haven't put the mean yet. So let me find the mean. Um, so the mean here is 24.51. Um, 24.51. So as you can see for the, for the social demographic profile, there's no need for us to really do verbal interpretation because not all of them are means. And at the same time, it's really hard to find any standard score for uh, demographic profile because it's really based on who we choose to select for the study. So for example, this case, sex assigned at birth, it's not under um, frequency. Uh, it's a categorical variable. So there's an NA in mean because it cannot be mean. So I just put the frequency for the male and the female here and the percentage. And then the region, in my case, I chose NCR and non-NCR. So that's 504, and this is the percentage. Uh, so this is what you will do now for your social demographic profile. So syempre, the social demographic profile that you have chosen in your study may be different from what I am using here, but you get the idea. So you most likely will have the same no age. Walang estimated age in years kasi sa, dito lang sa study na yan. In your case, they actually put the actual age. So just put age in years. And then I don't know what else did you uh, choose. no, And then how you plan to group them um, in terms of like, uh, for example, maybe you've chosen um, year level. So that's first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, and then you put the frequency and percentage. So again, this will be really dependent on whether you're able to identify if the variable is continuous or categorical or ordinal. And then uh, if it's continuous, then you would report the mean. If it is, um, if it is um, categorical, then you would report frequency and percentage. Same with if it's ordinal, right? So there you go. Second is you have your main variable. So for your main variables in, in, in the social sciences, usually we make use for the main variables of our study scales. No? So usually as we explain scales are continuous variables, they're interval variables. So there would more like there would most likely be means. No? So here for each, um, you're going to be indicating, you know, um, the specific questions that are found in your uh in your questionnaire and then you're going to compute the mean for each based on the output of the Jamovi and then you're going to be indicating the verbal interpretation of the mean and for purposes of this class now we don't really present this in the thesis but for the purposes of your learning in class you're also going to be presenting the median and the mode for each of the uh items and then um you put the items uh, you put the items of um, uh, of the same domain together based on how they are presented in your questionnaire, and then you present the overall mean for a specific domain. No? So, and then same thing here for social so, uh, solidarity and social justice. So, all the items under so solidarity and social justice, um, the all the means per item all the verbal interpretations per item, all of the medians and modes per items are also found here. And then you have your overall for social solidarity and justice. So again, no, for you to be able to compute the overall, which is the weighted mean for social solidarity and social justice in your Excel, you should have already computed for the mean of your, um, the mean of all of these items, right? Okay. And then um, we have your social solidarity, uh, and then we have the trust in public institutions. And then you put the verbal interpretation ranges here. So again, I've taught you earlier how to compute. For example, in this case, for every item and for each of the composite scores, you're going to be uh, the highest possible score, uh, the lowest possible score, lowest possible score is one, and the highest possible score is five, right? So again, five 
So uh, five minus one all over. So we have three groups, low, moderate, and high. So divide by three. So this is four divided by three. And the answer is 1.33. That's why from the lowest, you add 1.33 to get the range of the low. So 1 plus 1.33 is 2.33. So the low is 1.0 to 2.33. Next, for moderate, you have 2.33 to 3.66 because 2.33 plus 2.1 plus 1.33 is 3.66. So dapat pala ay 2.34. Right? And then for the high, um, 3.66 and up to the last kasi 5 naman na yung highest. You cannot go higher than that. And this is 3.67. Alright? So, and then you put it here, no? So, meron siyang um, tawag dito. Um, nakasub, nakasub, superscript siya. Just to indicate that uh, what were our basis of the mean for the verbal interpretation. Usually, ang uh, video verbal interpretation lang natin ay mean, no? Negative linear verbal interpretation, median and mode, and also this will be the last output that you will be using median and mode uh, for scales. Because again, like I said, usually for scales we use mean, but for purposes of learning, no, we're including it here in your assignment. So you're going to you to do something similar to this as well. And then that's for your main variable. So in your case, this is citizenship behavior. So I'm just going to say that I'm just lucky that all of this. Um, uh, uh, that all of these items are positively framed. No? So you might notice that in your citizenship behavior scales, especially for the global citizenship, some of them have to be negatively, uh, that some of them are negatively framed. Ibig sabihin, the questions are seemingly opposite from what the main variable really wants to measure or what the domain is supposed to measure. So you have to score it differently or score it in reverse or we call it reverse coding. So you, that is... Okay, so um, we will check that um, in your coding, in your code book, or we check that in your code book. No? So I don't know because when you're, when you're watching this, if this is after the, the checking of your code book. And then we have also the overall composite score. As you can see, no, all of them, all, all of them are moderate. Ah, no, no, there's one that's high. Um, so this one is high. Um, and then so we have the um we have that um coding all right so next we have your satisfaction with life so this one is only one domain just like your well-being it's only just one domain so um you have your moderate um you have your moderate uh, sorry, you have your scores for each item, and since the in, since the instruction of the um, since the instruction of the manual for the uh, and the journal for the satisfaction with life scale is we have the total is usually computed as uh, sum. So we have two different. So for the scale, the highest pass the lowest possible score is one. The highest possible score is seven. So one seven minus one equals six divided by two is two. I uh, divide by three is two. So one plus two is three. So one to three is low. And then 3.01 to five is moderate and 5.01 to seven is low. Uh, is, is high. Yeah. So yan siya. And then for the total, iba naman siya because uh, the, the lowest possible score for the total, kasi ina-add na to lahat, and that will be um, uh, seven, uh, uh, 5, 35 is the highest, so uh, uh, seven, uh, 35 minus 7 is 28, 28 divided by 3 is 9.33. So 7, my, 7 to 16.33 16 would be low, 16.34 to 25. 0.66 is moderate because 16.33 plus 9.33 is 25.66. And then the remaining range obviously is for high. So based on the scores that we've generated here, they're all moderate. And of course, all of the questions here are just the same direction, no, right, no negatively framed questions. So here you go. Um, all right, and then you have your appendix. So this is your output, no? For the, and this is what we will check when we return for your, um, for the next week. 
So thank you, and I hope you. There's really much to do here. This this is this just level one, no? And as a descriptive, palang tayo mean median mode. There are more coming up, no? But hopefully that you are able. Hopefully you're able to keep up. Thank you.